Mele Kaliki Maka. Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, all part of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Final day action, fifth place contest between Oregon State and the host Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. Both teams getting wins on second day action of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. And certainly, in this strength of field for this year's tournament, a fifth place finish would be pretty darn respectable on this Christmas day. How you doing, everybody? Hope you're enjoying your holiday. Kanoalehi Dino Gaudio, former head coach in the ACC. And yeah, considering the circumstances, getting a second win in this tournament to at least for Oregon State leave the island for Hawaii continue on with its season, it would mean something. We have two teams playing extremely well, Kano. Oregon State comes in winners of four of their last five games, and Hawaii, winners of six of their last seven. It's Christmas. We could send the, send the shot clock operator home today. <laughs> Give him a day off because we That's won't right. need him for this one. These two teams play fast and really score the basketball. Both of them averaging over 80 points a game. Yeah, it'll be some up and down action for sure on this Christmas morning here in Hawaii. Take us through the one on one. When Hawaii, and it sounds trite, scores the basketball, they win. And they're really filling it up in the tournament, averaging 83 points in their two tournament games here. And as we see, a big differential in their eight wins 51% from the field on their three losses. 43 percent and they've been playing lights out shooting it lights out in hawaii for oregon state it's the pac-12 leading scorer roberto nelson who has struggled at times from the field but he's hitting an amazing 20 for 21 from the free throw line averaging 18 and a half points per game in the first two games of this tournament We'll have the starting lineups for this game when we return. And yes, it is Christmas in Hawaii, which means we could be in the water. We could be braving the waves. We could be surfing. But instead, we're going to be taking in some quality basketball. Fifth place game in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Discover It Card. It's a game changer. And the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee. Built free. Beautiful Christmas day here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Final day action of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, Oregon State and Hawaii playing for the fifth place slot here in this year's field. Oregon State starting five. Roberto Nelson and Devon Collier. The top scoring tandem in the country. Nelson averaging 21.4 points per game. Collier just under 20 at 19.3. On the other side for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, Christian Stan Hardinger is the top scorer and rebounder. 17 points a game, seven rebounds, hit the game-winning shot with 1.7 on the clock to beat St. Mary's on night two. Head coach for Oregon State, Craig Robinson, in his sixth year, has yet to take the Beavers to the NCAA's. Last appearance for the program was 1990. Uh, he says he has reason to feel pretty optimistic with this year's group. He should feel optimistic. If he could stay healthy, not, not Craig himself, but his team, this is a team that could get to the NCAA tournament. Head coach for the Rainbow Warriors, Gib Arnold, in his fourth year. He is the fastest to 50 wins as head coach in program history. The other night's hero for the Rainbow Warriors, Christian Stan Hardinger. Shan a quality win for Hawaii against St. Mary's for Shan sure. Shanberger penetrates, and he's on the baseline, and he's not a deep shooter, but a good look. And what you liked about the shot, he let it go with confidence. Nice high arcing, held his follow through. With 1.7 seconds to go, a huge basket for Hawaii. And the tip between Victor Robbins and Isaac Foto won by Robbins. Oregon State quickly on the attack. And it'll be a whistle against Hawaii. The Beavers wearing their turquoise uniforms, part of the Nike N7 collection and N7 fun. Nike's promotion of sport and other benefits to Native American and Aboriginal communities in the United States and Canada and Oregon State were first to make the commitment to wear the turquoise uniforms for that cause as the first bucket is splashed through here for Oregon State. Well, Hawaii goes 2-3 baseline and they don't locate the guy in the opposite corner and Barton's wide open and knocks it down. And we see Oregon State on a scored basket come 1-3-1 one, one, trap. And that pressure causing trouble for Hawaii. Neville's unable to hang on to it along the sideline. It goes out of bounds, belongs to the Beavers, Oregon State, by the way. Four and two all-time when wearing these turquoise uniforms. It started 
with their former big man, Joe Burton, who was a Native American. And so something that they took on in 2010 and they bring it out every now and then, and they do so here in Hawaii on this Christmas contest against Hawaii. And we're seeing Daniel Gomez get the start again, and, and Barton with the bat, second basket in a row for Oregon State. So Charlie Barton comes out, hits a three, knocks down a, a, a driving two-point basket. Boy, he got away with one there. Steal by Nelson, almost gave it back, as you mentioned. Misses the lay-in, Collier the rebound stripped, tiptoeing against the baseline, resets it up front. Roberto Nelson jumped to dribble, which is a violation, but uh, well, this guy right here, Daniel Gomez, has really played well in this tournament, especially with the injury to Angus Brandt. And we're seeing what he does well. He's a very good passer from up top. Nelson blocked by Fotu. And now Garrett Neville's baseline runner off the iron. Rebound Fotu, follow-up no good. Christian Stan Hardinger at his hands on the ball, but only for a second. 5-0 in favor of Shale Barton. He scored all five points here for Oregon State. Now Gomez deep in the paint, too strong there. And Brandon Spearman. Now this is Hawaii's game. Open court in transition. Spearman, though, rudely met close to the rim by Devon Collier. Then a kicking foul or a kicking violation called against Oregon State. Hawaii is good in transition because they have good spacing. So wonderful timing on the block for Oregon State's and Collier. Van Hardinger too strong, full two. That shot swiped away by Daniel Gomez. Gomez getting the start once again in place of the injured Angus Brandt, who is available today, was listed as a game time decision, injured his knee the opening day against Akron. And the reverse on the cut by Robbins, not there. It was a scary moment for Grant, who tore his right ACL in a very similar situation last season. But the good news was it was merely a bone bruise. And so he's day to day. Neville's on the drive. Good finish. A very good finish. And what created the avenue was the ball reversal by Hawaii. When they reverse the basketball, they're much more efficient on the offensive end. All your lost control of it, it belongs to Hawaii. And there is Angus Brandt with the knee brace. See the averages. Injured himself in the quarterfinals against Akron. In the game against Towson, when Roberto Nelson was uh, ejected for a flagrant two, he steps up. Angus Brandt has 27 against Towson at home. Garrett Nevels knocks down the three. He is a 50% three-point shooter, but was 0 for 4 from out there in this Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic until that shot right there. And you're seeing two teams that like to extend defensively. 1-3-1 one, one when it's Oregon State. And we saw, see Hawaii in a 2-2-1 two, two, full court trap. And Kanoa, this is the Princeton offense where the ball's being reversed. They try to get to the big up top for a backdoor cut. And they post Nelson up against Nevels. Nelson, who stands at 6-4, Nevels. 6-2 is the listed height, and that might be a tad uh, generous. That's being kind. That's being kind by the sports information <laughs> director <laughs> of Hawaii. Here's Spearman from some distance. Got it to go. Senior from Chicago, Illinois, averaging 11 a game. Strong athletic wing, capable with the three-point spot up. And he can put it on the floor, but a wonderful three-point shot and lift on the jump shot from Spearman. Referred to by Gib Arnold as the leader on this Rainbow Warrior team. Collier in a collision with Stan Hardinger, and it's Stan Hardinger picking up the block. I like Stan Hardinger coming over and uh, rotating on the help, but uh, Spearman, good ball rotation. Watch his elevation on the shot, holds the follow through, splash. Championship matchup set here in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. 14th ranked Iowa State going up against Boise State. Cyclones still among the nation's unbeaten. Boise State coming off of that 80-54 shellacking of South Carolina in the semifinals the other night. 
Absolutely, and uh, you like to play the young guy, Isaac Foto, who, who comes in. He's the co-Big West freshman of the year last year with Alex Young from UCI. You see the bandage on his hand? He's actually playing with a broken hand. His shooting hand occurred in the New Orleans game, but you know what? Hasn't his effect his shooting at all. 27 for the 39 on the season. And still 58% from the field on the year for Isaac Foto. Open look for Barton. He has five points, make it eight. Charlotte Barton off to a heck of a start. The 6'3 junior from Sweden. And again, ball reversal finds the open shooter. And it's become a game of can you top this? And so far, it's been an even match. Nevels hits another three. He has eight to match Barton. Like we said, we can send the shot clock operator home today for this one. <laughs> into the lane. Gomez had an opening, couldn't handle the pass, kicks it up top. And the three-point try by Langston Morris Walker off the mark. Schamberger, Keith Schamberger has provided such a steadying force for Hawaii at that point guard position. Transfer from San Jose State, had the red shirt a season ago after spending two seasons with the Spartans. And foul committed by Gomez on Stan Hardinger. Well, what Gomez did was they switched the ball screen, and he didn't have to go down and help on Stan Hardinger. He was way off the block, so ill-advised double team right there when he didn't need to, and then he compounds the problem by fouling. They set Stan Hardinger up against Gomez. Good matchup here. And he gets fouled. Another whistle against Gomez. Just seconds apart. Well, here where without Angus Brand, it becomes a problem for Oregon State. But just stay strong, stay hands straight up in the air. But what he needs to do first, Daniel Gomez, is don't let Stan Hardinger get that deep in the lane. So Christian Stan Hardinger goes to the free throw line, where he is a 72% shooter. Just seven points, four fouls in 22 minutes. Was said to be feeling a little under the weather in the opening round game against Boise State. A loss for Hawaii, but a narrow loss. Then had 22, nine rebounds, four steals, and the game-winning shot against St. Mary's. Well, he's been the difference uh, between Hawaii winning and losing in the tournament. Doesn't play well against South Carolina. He had a poor first game. Second game, he comes out in an attack mode, hits the big shot with 1.7 to go, and it's the game winner. Hawaii losing to Boise State. The opening day of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic by one, 62-61. So they're figuring we're just a couple plays away from possibly being in the championship game, maybe. Offensive board, Collier stuck with it and was able to get it past the reserve seven-footer for Hawaii, Davis Rositis. And, and you love that. He played through contact and finished at the rim. Spearman, strong drive. What a finish by the senior. Now, when Rositis is in the game, they're more aggressive defensively. They're on the ball, 1-2-1-1, one, 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 hard pressure. Collier with a Euro step, and he finishes. Good move by the big guy to avoid the charge with the Euro step. Four points for Collier. It's a one-point game, and it has been a ferocious pace off the jump. Stan Hardinger right back at you. Kanoa, defense. It's not the thing you put around the yard to keep in the dog. You got to guard out there a little bit. <laughs> Here's Collier. Almost walked with it, the crowd wanted it. Not almost, he did. And then Barton does, just for good measure. <laughs> Take a look at Devon Collier going to work. I love the first one right here. Goes, plays through contact with the strong finish and then shows his versatility in the open court. Nice Euro step, goes around the defender. Ben Hardinger was open off of the screen, squares up, and hits the jumper. He's got six. And he's added that to his game. That's almost the same position, but the other side of the floor where he hit the game winner the other night. Biggest lead of this first half here for Hawaii. 12 and a half minutes to go. It's already 19 to 14 in favor of the Bulls. We knew it'd be entertaining because both of these teams can score. Collier, though, couldn't get it 
on that try. And now Schamberger into the front court for Hawaii. Stopping and popping from inside the arc. Rebound collected by Hallis Cook. Cook, a 6'3 freshman from Union City, New Jersey. Played for Bob Hurley at Fame St. Anthony's. Roberto Nelson, oh boy, does he force your defense to have to guard far from the hoop. Well, in the tournament, he comes in, he's shooting 27% in the two games, but I think he's found his offense. He was shooting well from the free throw line, as we know, but if he's on target for Oregon State, it bodes well for them. Yeah, 20 of 21 from the free throw line coming into this game in this tournament for Roberto Nelson, but Stan Hardinger says right back at you. Now, that might be good for Oregon State. Cano, and here's what I mean by that. He's not a great deep shooter, so hopefully he doesn't continue to settle for those jump shots after having made the three. And the foul on the drive, as Nelson was trying to convert at the other end. 11-27, 22-17 Hawaii. If this guy is dropping buckets for Oregon State, it bodes well for them. And how about the big fella? That's not his strength, but he's making them on Christmas. Five-point lead for Hawaii here. Fifth-place game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. And a look at Angus Brandt, 6'10", senior from Australia. Injured his knee in the quarterfinal round against Akron. It was a scary moment for him. It was, and I saw him walk back into the hotel after the injury. It was the same type of play when he tore his ACL, but uh, I think it was he scared him more than anything else. He's fine. And here's what he brings to Oregon State. He's a skilled face of four, which Craig Robinson needs in the Princeton offense. He can score the ball, which is reflective of the 27 points he had against Towson before coming into the tournament, and he rebounds his position. We have not seen him out on the floor yet. Was listed day to day and was a game time decision officially for this contest. He did warm up with the team. But we'll see if Craig Robinson decides at some point to call upon the 6'10 senior as Nelson knocks down the free throw. But we had 28 shots in this game going into that second TV timeout. So that gives you a little bit of an indication as to how up and down this game has been and looks to be. The, these are two teams that like to play a 75 to 85 possession game. They like a lot of possessions. They play fast. They extend their defenses. That's why they score the ball at the rate they do, both averaging over 80 points a game. Here's Stan Hardinger putting it on the deck. Got it to Spearman, and the teardrop didn't go for him. And that's Stan Hardinger's strength, attacking the basket despite missing the shot. That's what he needs to do more of this afternoon. Extra pass from Nelson, and then an extra step out of that corner by Malcolm Duvivier, another freshman on this squad from Toronto, Canada. And Kanoa, the reason DeVivier walks, because he, he's not ready to catch the basketball. His feet aren't set, so while he has it in his hands, he's trying to adjust his footwork. The freshman needs to do his work early before the ball gets there. Quincy Smith, backup point guard on the floor here for Hawaii. He tried to run that back screen for Rositis. And the shot by Spearman not there. in the zone look. Duvivier steps into a three. Rims out on him, Stan Hardinger, another rebound. But if you're Craig Robinson, you're happy with the four-pass possession. Nevels for three. Went in and then popped out. Halfway down on that one. The team that plays the best transition, transition defense will go a long way to winning this basketball game. Kicked out of bounds by Stan Hardinger. Isaac Fotu coming back onto the floor, and Davis Rositis will sit. Cano, we would tell our guards when we're on offense, when we're running offense, when that ball's in the shooter's hands, on the lift of the shot, before he even lets it go, you guys need to start getting back defensively. So our defense is set. Good defensive teams are back, set, and moving into the basketball. Couple more substitutions. Olaf Shoften are on for Oregon State. And there's a look at Aaron Valdez, 6'5 freshman from Whittier, California, for Hawaii. Nelson, good pump to get the defender out of the way. Now 
Cook on the drive, leaves it for Schaftenar, and he drops it in over Fotu. Schaftenar, 6'10", sophomore from the Netherlands. Spearman got tied up, goes out of bounds, it stays here with Hawaii. They had the ball out of the net, up the floor, and are taking a shot, and there was 32 seconds on the shot clock. <laughs> Quick inbound. Now, defensively, Hawaii, nothing hurts your defense more than dribble penetration, and that's what they gave up on the prior possession. Neville's bounce pass. Fotu got it stripped. It stays here once again, 24 on the shot clock. Now, we're going to see Oregon State with Hawaii's baseline out-of-bounds play go 2-3 zone. And it's going to be a foul on Olaf Schaftenar. His older brother, Rulon, played for Oregon State between 2007 and 2010. In fact, was the MVP of the 2009 College Basketball Invitational as Valdez off of the inbound hits the short jump hook. You know what you just talked about there, Schaftenar's brother playing? It says a lot about Craig Robinson. If your brother goes to school, has a great experience, Craig Robinson, a wonderful mentor, you're influencing your, your sibling that that's where they need to go. Great education, great coaching. Down the lane, the pass goes to Reed, and too much traffic in between him and the rim. And then it goes the other way as Hawaii was trying to move it up the floor. Good effort by Nelson went into the official scorer's I, table. I, I really like Roberto Nelson's face for this game. And what I mean by that, he's into the game, uh, playing with confidence. Nice delivery on the pass. They, they have to finish the shot on the roll there, but uh, really hustling. Roberto Nelson came to play today. He had to wait patiently in the wings with guys like Jared Cunningham and some other strong backcourt players. Roberto Nelson had to wait his turn, was able to basically blow up last season and, and become you, that guy. And you know what, Kano, a lot of kids don't want to do that. We, we live in a society today where it's, hey, I need things right now. Uh, with social media, you explain to people why you're not playing. Those guys that pay their dues, wait and, 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 and wait their turn, those are special individuals. And uh, this guy right here can be one for Oregon State. Really, for him, it's more of a question of can he do it consistently night in and night out? Traveling violation, fourth turnover for Oregon State. And, and, and here's what we're seeing out of the players from both teams. The game is so fast-paced. It's everybody's going 100 miles an hour. You need to slow down and maybe go 80. Slow down a tick on offense. Go fast, but don't hurry. Exactly, as John Wooden would say. Nevels from the elbow, the runner. Nelson going a couple notches higher for the rebound. That runner's a harder shot than you think. Sometimes you're better served by just one, two step and into your jump shot. It's a difficult shot, that runner. Schaftenar, a little shake and bake, gets it to Collier up in and one. And you're seeing the type of big men that Craig Robinson recruits, guys that have a skill set like Schaftenar, a crossover dribble from a 6'10 guy, and he makes the pass. And Collier, really playing like his 6'8", 220-pound weight today. He's playing big on the interior. Already 11 players have seen action, still with 8.18 left to go in this first half in this game for Craig Robinson's crew. What is that indicative of? Well, you're talking the pace of the game, right? Really fast, so let's get a lot of guys in there that were playing fresh. And it says a lot about Craig Robinson trusting his bench. And... Uh, Especially with Angus Brandt out, and he hasn't come into the game yet, but just a lot for the confidence he has in his bench. Seven points for Collier. We're tied at 24. Stan Hardinger back on the floor. Here's Smith. Stan Hardinger trying to work against Reed, and it'll be a blocking foul on Jamal Reed. And, and this is a perfect example of the rules. Two hands on a dribbler, automatic foul. We thought it would be a fun one here on Christmas morning in Hawaii. It's tied at 24. Now we may have seen a sequence 
of the new rule being applied here with Christian San Hardinger going against Jarmal Reed. This is a perfect example. We freeze it right there. Anytime you put two hands on the dribbler, that's an automatic foul. And coaches, the new rules are being addressed defensively. Get your hands out of your defense. But Gib Arnold talks a lot about when he's dealing with Stan Hardinger, hey, drive the ball. Take advantage of the new rule from an offensive perspective by driving the ball at defenders. Yeah, he feels like Stan Hardinger, one of those players that can really benefit from that new rule here this college season. Well, he can. He's a big guy that's a strong, hard driver, and it's difficult to get your body in front of him. Out as deep into the shot clock as Hawaii has gone in this game with 15 seconds left. Smith with the runner, and it's off the mark, but another chance after the Stan Hardinger offensive board. And that's what he does. He does the heavy lifting, Stan Hardinger, for Hawaii, whether it's rebounding, keeping the ball alive like we just saw. Schamberger, the penetration. The no look to Fultu. Well, the right hand is fractured, so he went lefty, and it went for him. He makes him right hand, left hand. I'm not sure about his look with the hair. That's not for me, but I'll take him on my team anytime. I'm jealous of anybody that can grow that much hair up there. <laughs> I love the hesitation out of Schamberger on the drive. He finds the offensive player. And like you said, which, which expands offensive guys in the post game, being able to shoot with either hand. He's shooting 47% to start the game. Oregon State, 50%. Nelson, fall away. That was a beauty. That was a beauty, and like the post-up, Nelson recognizing he had the mismatch over Quincy Smith, and they delivered the basketball to him. He called it, Coach. Nelson seems to have a fluidity to his game here in the early goings. Full two. He, he really does. I, 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 tell, I say a lot of times I like his face, his look coming into the game. And another traveling call. That's the fifth turnover for Oregon State. It is. He's playing like an NBA guard. Post up a little too far off the block. That's Dwayne Wade-ish, if I could say. Oh, ho, ho. you went there. Little fade away, little fade away. That's the, high praise. The, the fade is what gave him the separation. Um, but I like the way he came out to play the game today, Roberto Nelson. Tied for third in scoring in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, 18 and a half points a game. ESPNU's coverage of ACC basketball continues Friday when Marcus Page and the Tar Heels host Northern Kentucky at the Dean Smith Center. That's Friday at 7 Eastern on ESPNU, also live on Watch ESPN. You know this Carolina team has greatness in their DNA when they beat Louisville on a neutral side. And most impressive is what they did when they went to Michigan State and won in uh, East Lansing. That's, a, that's not a good win. That's a great win. For Roy Williams and his crew, it's more about being able to bring that kind of effort on a consistent basis. No question, because we know the McDonald's All-Americans that he had. And Marcus Page is having a marvelous year for them. Hamburger in the corner, the pump and go. Gets it to Fotu. Now Smith had a seam and he took advantage. I'll tell you, this is my first in-person person, uh, look at Hawaii. I, I, I'm really impressed with their guards. Quincy Smith, a six-foot sophomore from Antioch, California. Jarmal Reed controlling the ball with about 10 on the shot clock. Attack Stan Hardinger, called for the offensive foul. They're going to say he came in elbows up. I don't know. He had two hands on the basketball, but uh, here's the drive. He, watch at the end of the drive. He plays off two feet. That's a basketball move. He's just taking the ball to the basket. I'm applauding uh, Reed on the play right there. And the thing I like the, the most about a Kanoa, how he came off two feet. Now they're going to review this for a, you know, elbow above the shoulder, but uh, I think it was a basketball play. Darren George, Keith Kimball, Jason Baker, the officiating crew, and yeah, that certainly looked like it was 
Yeah, he, he, he's coming up on, on the shot. Now, they're going to go to the table, and they'll, they'll, they'll make a decision whether it's a flagrant one, but... Yeah, that certainly looked unintentional. Yeah, it really looked like he was making, as they say, a basketball play. It did earn a groan from the home crowd here at the Stan Sheriff Center, but I agree with you, Coach. Yeah, I, I, I think it is. It'll be interesting to see how they come out of uh, this huddle determining what, what, what play that was, whether it's a flagrant one or... I, I, I think I think he's, he's... Now, they could come out of this and say it's a flagrant one. It's obviously not a flagrant two. Or, or just a common foul like they called and leave it at that. But there is that gray area that allows for, as you deemed it and termed it, a basketball play or basketball move, even if there is that kind of contact. It is, it is. That's the adjustment they made in the new rule uh, this season. I, I don't see how you can look at that and say, hey, he's just, he's just not taking the ball up to the basket. Christian Stan Hardinger, the kind of player who finds himself in that situation. I mean, he's not scared to put his no, nose into it, some it, dangerous situations. And, and Kanoa, from a coaching perspective, you're telling your big guys, hey, I don't want you fading. I, I don't want you going away from the defense. Uh, take the ball hard. Take the ball through the defender. And I like it. They, they're coming over and, and, and saying it's a good, it's a common it's foul, foul as opposed yeah. to a flagrant one foul. And I, and I think that's absolutely the, the right call. In terms of the flagrant one, I'd like to see him count the basket. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. they could have uh, gone a few notches back the other way, in your opinion. Definitely a basketball play. Here's Foto catching the ball too far off the blocks. Foto got a whistle away from the basketball. They're going to get Victor Robbins in the paint. That's his first. Sixth team foul for Oregon State. Hawaii with five. So closing in on free throw opportunities here. A little over five minutes to go in this first half. Stan Hardinger fouled on the jump shot attempt. And, and you see the Oregon State bench is really upset because. We're not, Oregon State, ready to play. We're not ready to play while the referee has the ball. We would tell guys, listen, before the ball's inbounded, while the referee has it, defense starts on a baseline out of, B, out of bounds when the referee has the ball. So Stan Hardinger to the line. Nine points, four rebounds to speak of. Make it ten points. Preseason all Big West Conference was a first-teamer in Hawaii's first season in the Big West last year. A transfer from Nebraska. Long, high-energy, aggressive four-man. Yeah, he's one of those guys who just has a motor that won't quit. A little actor in him, too. Good act down here on the... Uh, <laughs> on, on, on baiting the call. Though. He knows where the camera's at. Yeah. He knew where it was the other night, too, and he hit that jump shot with 1.7 <laughs> seconds to go. Here's Shoftenar, another ISO against Dan Hardinger, another crossover dribble. Cook steps inside the line, misses the J, rebound Fotu. He missed it because he was fading backwards instead of going straight up and down. Dan Hardinger, step back. That was Nowitzki-like, but it, it didn't go. It was Nowitzki-like. The only thing it wasn't like, Nowitzki knocks them big boys down. <laughs> Four and a half minutes to go. In the first half, Nelson draws the whistle. Oregon State coming in seven and three. With that win the other day, they were able to avoid their first back-to-back -back losing streak. Able to defeat George Mason 58 54. Craig Robinson, who was able to welcome his brother in law, President Obama, and the rest of the first Ohana or family to the Stan Sheriff Center, the opening day against Akron. And in the last game, Roberto Nelson down the stretch played really well, and it's carried over till today. Neville's 
the smooch off the glass. I love using the backboard in tight like that because if you get bumped, and he didn't in that situation, but you could still make the shot. It's not a finesse shot when you use the backboard. Ten points for Nevels. And there's a backdoor cut and find Shoftenar to Nelson. And that's the Princeton offense. When the ball's coming at you, you could come for a handoff or backdoor cut. Here's Spearman on the wing. He's going to try a three. Got it. What a good looking ath athlete, Brandon Spearman is. He's got eight points, largest lead of this first half for the Rainbow Warriors. And Spearman hits the three, and he is their best on ball defender for Hawaii as well. Shoftenar had a look at it, decided to pass it off. They get Nelson a try from deep. Rebound Nevels. And a bad decision by Shoftenar, because he had the little guy on him take it to the basket. Stan Hardinger had position and a foul on the overplay called against Charlie Barton. Seven point advantage for the Rainbow Warriors. Give Arnold on this Christmas day applauding his team's effort. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K and Sleep Number, the only bed that provides comfort individualized. So when we see Shaftonar catch the ball right here, the post player, our guy right here can go back door or come off the screen. He decides to go back door. And watch the delivery by Shaftonar on the pass. Wonderful pass, Roberto Nelson. And you're seeing Craig Robinson on offense. He played for Pete Carrill at Princeton, was a great player there. And you see Coach Carrill's influence all the way out on the West Coast at Oregon State with one of his uh, prodigies, if you will, Craig Robinson. 11 points for Nelson with that free throw. 12 points for Hawaii's Christian Stan Hardinger. Hawaii shooting 50% from the field and 5 of 6 from outside the three-point arc. Well, one of the things that Oregon State has to get better at, and Craig Robinson knows this, they have to bow their neck and guard better on the defensive end of the floor. Some light full court pressure little from token, the Rainbow Warriors. Little token pressure, one, two, two. And a foul on the reach and called against Schamberger. And, and that, what we just saw, is a big part of pressing. I know a foul was called, but your back flow in the press, the guys that when the ball goes over your head, sprint off and try to get deflections. Schamberger looked like he might have had a deflection on that one. On the floor for Hawaii, number 10, redshirt freshman Derby Enos walked onto the program. One of the local kids on the squad, graduate of Kamehameha Kapalama School. Nelson hits the free throw. And there, there's a lot of guys on the floor out here in the uh, blue jerseys and the white jerseys you can foul. This isn't one of them. He, he's lived at the free throw line, Roberto Nelson, in this tournament. Gets the bounce there. He is now 24 of 25 from the free throw line in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. And we're seeing a little 2-2-1 contained press out of the Beavers right now. And they drop right back into a 2-3 zone. Lead is seven here for Hawaii. Spearman, riser from the baseline. Clangs it off the heel. Nelson jumped too early. Fulton got his hands on it, and a foul called against the Beavers. It started all of that. One of the ways you could attack a zone, Kano, is by screening it. And Hawaii set two very good screens on the zone, which created the shot. But Oregon State, in their 2-3, find a man to put a body on on your box outs. Second foul against Barton, so here is Isaac Fotu. Remember with that wrapping on that right hand because of the fracture suffered earlier in the season against New Orleans. A 6'8 sophomore from New Zealand turned down a $300,000 contract, in fact, in the offseason to play for the New Zealand Breakers, a team that he loved growing up. I, I, I love the decision because if you get his education at a great school like Hawaii, and uh, it'll always be there. The pros will always be there for him. How about the matchup? Stan Hardinger on Nelson right now. 
And try to ISO Collier against Fotu. Double team comes. Tough shot by Robbins. Collier the board. Follow up, no. Tapped around, still up for grabs. Spearman had it, lost it. Bodies flying. Enos comes out of there with it, and here come the Rainbow Warriors. Stan Hardinger gets it. When the ball's on the backboard and when the ball's on the floor, that's when the fight starts in this game. Robbins quiets the crowd momentarily. It was a 10-point lead, largest of this first half for the Rainbow Warriors. Big time hit that time for Victor Robbins. And you're seeing Hawaii do a lot of screening against the Oregon State zone. Stan Hardinger called for steps. I didn't see that one. Take another look at the frantic. This, this is all about effort right here. Both teams right now. And, th and then when it's loose, Hawaii comes up with it. Oregon State, two guys on the floor. Great energy play, great hustle play. And how about Stark being uh, Stan Harding on Nelson defensively? Shoftenar. Backing in on Spearman. So that's the other side of that matchup. You put Stan Hardinger on Nelson, and then you have Spearman at 6'3", trying to guard 6'10", Olaf Shoftenau. And, and here's what else you like about it. Like, you just can't play the game, Kanoa, with your body. You have to play the game from the shoulders up. And Oregon State's guys recognize the mismatch. That's where the ball deserves to go. And, and Shoftenau takes advantage of it. But you have to have a high IQ to be successful in this game. Shoftenar makes the first. We haven't seen Angus Brent again injuring his knee in the quarterfinal round of this tournament. It was listed as a game time decision, did warm up with the team, but yet to be utilized by head coach Craig Robinson. Five point advantage here for the Bows. Not enough on the clock for Hawaii to go two for one, but let, let's see what we do against the zone here. Oh, two. Against Shoftenar, who pokes it away, reaching around. Ahead it goes. Duvivier, terrific. in and one. A terrific pass with the bounce pass. I apologize, Kanoa, for jumping on your words there, but wonderful pass. Take another look at this connection. Jumps over and around the defender. And, it, and again, I love Charlie Barton playing off of two feet. Doesn't jump off one foot. It jumps off two, that way you can make the conventional three-point play. I apologize, the Vivier made the basket. And the pass was Victor Robbins, the 6'7 sophomore from Compton, able to get it ahead. And just like that, it's now a two-point game, an 8-0 run here for Oregon State. Now, Gib Arnold would like his guys to take the shot. Hardly any differential with the shot clock. There's probably five to go, so you have a chance for an offensive rebound and a put back if there's a miss. Schamberger waiting patiently. Seven on the shot clock. They'll get into the set. The penetration. Fotu. Hard bounce. And it gets knocked out of bounds, but a foul is called. They're going to get Roberto Nelson. That's his second. I like the call. Good call. But again, the penetration from the Hawaii guards is what created the passing lane for Fotu. Well, here is Fotu. Soft touch. But the bounce wasn't there for him. Now don't assume on a free throw that you're, you're going to get the basketball. Fotu comes in shooting 67%. He struggled early today from the free throw line. So let's make sure for Oregon State we box out on the free throw line. And Craig Robinson using a timeout. What is he telling his guys? Well, that's that's exactly what he's emphasizing. Let's let's make sure we box out here. He took his timeout because if he doesn't use it, he loses it in the second half. And let's. A good timeout call. Let's make sure we short everything up on our free throw box out. See the rest of the schedule here. We have Akron and South Carolina for third place, 6.30 Eastern, ESPN2. 
And the championship game, Iowa State and Boise State at 8.30 Eastern. And how about Akron, South Carolina? They both gonna get on a plane tonight, red eye back east. And on Saturday, Akron plays at South Carolina. Back-to-back <laughs> <laughs> -back game for those two. And we used to tell our guys, the second time we play a team, it's on you guys. You were out there for 40 minutes, you know them. We'll prepare you, but you know them better than we do as coaches. Rebound Collier off the miss, the heave from midcourt. And that's how the first half will come to a close. It was a 10-point lead for Hawaii with just over a minute to go. It is now a two-point contest heading into the locker room. 40 to 38 here at halftime. When we come back, we'll take a peek at the sights and sounds of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. That's coming up on the K Jewelers Halftime Report. And we welcome you back to the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, all part of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers Hawaii up two on Oregon State in the fifth place game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. And we once again wish you a mele kalikimaka. Merry Christmas here from Honolulu, Hawaii. Kanoa Lehi Dino Gadio. Two-point game at halftime. Where will one of these teams win it in the second half? I think both teams have outstanding guards. So I think one of those post players, whether it's Stan Hardinger, makes a difference. Collier makes a difference. I think the post play is going to determine the winner of this basketball game. Well, the top scorers for each team, they've been able to bring it here on Christmas Day. Well, you're looking at Stan Hardinger, and he's shown his offensive skill set at all three levels. We're seeing him drive the basketball hard from the top of the key. His middle game, which he has, and surprisingly knocking down the three this afternoon. He scored from all three levels. And for Oregon State, Roberto Nelson has come to play today. And it has started Kanoa with his mental approach to the game, which was excellent. A great attitude. Here's a little post up to spin the fadeaway jump shot. The fadeaway is what's created the space. And he's playing the game with his mind, too. He's overplayed, so he cuts back door and a... Uh, Wonderful offensive half by both of these teams. One of these teams has to step up defensively and get consecutive stops, which could give them a little bit of separation with their opponent. Two guys in double figures for Hawaii. 15 for Stan Hardinger, 10 for Garrett Nevels, who's also hit a couple of threes. On the other side, Roberto Nelson, the only one above 10. He has 13. Wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. Hope you are certainly enjoying your holiday. Hawaii will control to start second half play. And Oregon State comes out man-to-man -man defense. And Foto goes to work. Fractured hand and all. The jump hook is pure. Fractured hand and all. And the quick move that Foto made, made negated the double team from Oregon State. He has excellent footwork. And technique down there in the post. Lob pass to Collier. Poked out of bounds by Fotu. And he makes the hustle play on defense as well. I, I, I just love Fotu's energy. He comes to play. He's versatile. J just a high-energy player. Big West co-freshman of the year last season, along with UC Irvine's Alex Young. And Gomez, who sat most of the first half with fouls, is back into the basketball game. Here's Charlay Barton, six seconds on the shot clock, working against Schamberger. Hesitation move, the crossover, and a reach-in foul called against Schamberger with two seconds on the shot clock. And, and it's a bailout foul. He, 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 he's fading away, he's fading away from the basket. No need to foul him on this shot. So fresh 35 here, and Barton can set up the offense. Gomez, bounce pass down low. Collier up over three Rainbow Warrior defenders. Didn't matter. Good, good players beat their man. The great players beat their man and beat the help. And that's what Collier did right there. Fotu came over. He went through his defender and shot it over Fotu. Nine points now for Devon Collier to go along with five boards. The lead is two for Hawaii. They led by ten. With just over a minute left in that first half in the Oregon State. Went on a tear, an 8-0 run to close the half. And you see Oregon State go zone there to try to keep the basketball in front of them defensively. And his hesitation and the easy deuce for Charlie Barton. 
solid point guard. He runs the team. Doesn't take a lot of shots, Charlie Barton. But when he does take them, high percentage field goal attempts. Started the last 20 games of, or going back to last season, he started the last 20 games. And eventually took the job from Ahmad Starks at the point guard position last year. Starks wound up transferring to Illinois. And when you're in zone defense, you need to talk and point as to who you have. And then you have to anticipate where the next pass might come from. Schamberger kicks to Spearman. Schamberger will try a three. With one second on the shot clock, knocks it down. His first points of the game. So we've seen both teams go deep into the shot clock, which is, has been a rarity this afternoon for both Oregon State and Hawaii. So three points, seven assists, though, for Keith Schamberger. Now Collier. Not sure where that pass was going. And he had a bad angle. Ill-advised, to say the least, on the pass. Seventh turnover for the Beavers. Fotu was open in the post, and Spearman didn't give it to him. And Fotu, a little bit of displeasure on his face. There's a turnover by Hawaii. Nelson, Oregon State with the numbers. Three on two. He takes it himself. Left it short, though. Rebound, Robbins. His follow-up not there. And Stan Hardinger is fouled, and it looks like they're going to get Nelson on this one. So opportunity presented itself for the Beavers, and they weren't able to capitalize. You have to finish those plays that close to the basket. You know, some, some layups are more difficult than others. Defenders in front of you, but, but Roberto Nelson had his hands right to the basket there. He has to finish that. And now has three fouls to go along with his 13 points. Now, defensively, the blue shirts bumping guys off, talking, pointing who they have. Spearman. Gets his own rebound. Spearman and the foul. You, 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 you love Brandon and Spearman. He misses the shot. He doesn't dip his head. He stays with the play. Athletic, plays hard. Bring a little bit of that emotion to Christmas Day. Daniel Gomez, meanwhile, picking up his third foul, and that's something that Spearman brings to the table here for this Hawaii team. That energy, some of that leadership. Chicago, Illinois native, a transfer from Indian Hills Community College. Played alongside Iowa State's Dustin Hogue there at Indian Hills. And a couple other University of Hawaii players that came via Indian Hills, Tony Maroney, Trevor Ruffin. You're familiar with those guys, Yeah, coach. don't talk to me about Trevor Ruffin. 1993, I come to what was then the Rainbow Classic and now the Diamond Head. Wow, wonderful take. Yeah, Collier to Jamal Reed. And Collier can pass it too. I like them attacking the pressure, but I brought a young, inexperienced, and small Army team <laughs> out here. And we leave 0-3, Kanoa. I felt like I came to Hawaii for open heart surgery. <laughs> Getting on that plane, flying back to New York, that was a tough one. So much different feel this time around, you're saying. Fotu had the position down low. The lead is five here for Hawaii. The pace is so fast for both teams. Position and defense. Do your work early before the ball gets there. Front Fotu on that post stop. Boy, he got away with the carry there. Here's Gomez, guarded by Stan Hardinger. Tried to thread the needle, Stan Hardinger took it away. Stan Hardinger is the team's leader in steals, gets it back from Schamberger, back to Schamberger it goes. And with Reed guarding him on the perimeter, Schamberger trying to find Fotu underneath. It's a success. I, I can't emphasize what a good pass that was. And he threw the ball not to Fotu, but he threw it away from the defense, which created the angle for the pass to be completed. Seven-point lead, Hawaii. Nelson, the backdoor cut, and that one gets swatted out of bounds by Nevels. Great pass against the press. The finish. Both teams really sharing the basketball. And Fotu finishes at the rim. How about this pass? Just loved it. Away from the defense, uses the rim as a protector.
is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And Tyco Integrated Security. Safer, smarter, Tyco. 51-44, Hawaii fifth place game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. The 2014 Diamond Head Classic field is almost set. Six of the eight teams are now committed. And then you have conferences like the Pac-12, the Big Ten represented. Wichita State now a top 10 team in the I, nation I, currently. I love Wichita State. And, and to know, remember, now I said this on December 25th. If, if, and I emphasize the word if, a team could go undefeated, before the NCAA tournament, it's Wichita State in the Missouri Valley, with Creighton now having gone to the Big East. Don't be surprised if they do. As soon as they lose, you'll call me and say, hey, great prediction. I think a bunch of Wichita State fans might call you before I do. <laughs> Fade away shot by Barton. Last touch by Hawaii out of bounds. You, you, you love Wichita State. Size, how hard they play. They rebound the basketball. I don't think they'll go undefeated in the league, but they, they, they could. They're certainly turning into one of these stories of this college basketball season. Nelson left it short. Spearman. Look at the ball movement by Hawaii. And Schamberger, a little bit too much foot movement there. He turns it over. He, he should have just caught it and reversed it. The, the, the one more, he'd have been better served instead of trying to bounce. A lot of guys, when they catch it, they want to put the basketball on the floor. One more to the open, open receiver on the reversal of the ball. So Oregon State with it. Shooting 45% for the game versus 51 for Hawaii. I, I love how Foto shows hard jumping out there on those ball screens. Barton gets it to Gomez on the roll. Knocks over Spearman. Blocking foul called against Spearman. Now, defensively, what Hawaii does is when a guy's coming off the ball screen, watch Foto step out on the floor. So Spearman has to help on Gomez because that's Foto's man. I think this is a little bit yeah. of a Hawaii crowd, huh? Seems to be. <laughs> they didn't like it. But I like the defensive rotation by Hawaii. That's indicative of a well-coached team. Third team foul of this half for the Rainbow Warriors. Oregon State with two on its side. Now Gomez. Found some room in the lane, but threw it away. And, and you know what, Kanoa? Gomez has the ball, and he, he's too much wanting to pass it. Look to score the basketball when, when you have it in the low post. Be a little more aggressive. Ball, you're the boss when you have the basketball. Look to score first. Gomez, who had five points, eight rebounds, five blocks in the win over George Mason a couple of nights ago. Still seeing zone out of Oregon State defensively. Foto working against Gomez. Spearman follows it up, and he draws the whistle, and it could be against Gomez. That would be his fourth. Here's what you love about Spearman. He's a glue guy. He, he, he plays hard. You just like his energy level, and other guys on that team feed off of him. And so Gomez, who had a career-high nine points the opening day of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic in the loss against Akron, he sits zero in the scoring column, four personal fouls, and Spearman adding to this Hawaii lead at the free throw line. Well, Gomez played really well coming off the bench the other night, and he's playing like he's playing like a sophomore this afternoon. But he has a bright future, really early Gomez in his offensive development. Spearman slaps the floor as he gets into the defensive stance against Cook. Now Nelson. Stepping inside the arc. Rims out on him. Schamberger pulls it down. To Oregon State, you're happy with the shot, however. Stan Hardinger. Lob pass to Foto, and he's fouled. Was getting pushed underneath. 
It was Charlie Barton under there. I, I really thought Barton shot, thought that the, the shot was going to be taken. Well, here it was a pass inside of Foto, and he was actually blocking out, which created the foul. And that is the third foul on Barton. Fourth team foul for the Beavers. Foto to the line. This is a guy who played on the New Zealand senior national team coach at the age of 17. So did they get that kind of experience against grown men at that young of an age? You can see why he is so effective in the post. In, in, invaluable. And they say he has a tremendous work ethic. And we talked before about it. We should tell our players good teams are made from October to March. Good players are made from March to October. What you're doing in the offseason. Backdoor cut, Nelson finishes at the rim. You have to know defensively when the ball's being dribbled at you that your guys in that offense is going to go backdoor. So Nelson gets into the scoring column here in the second half. He has 15. Spearman found his way to the basketball. Full two finishes reverse. Spearman getting a lot of those hustle plays. He, he really is, and I'm really impressed with Foto in the post. Why his footwork is just excellent. Four players in double digits now scoring for Hawaii, and here is a steal by Schamberger. They're off and running again. Lob to the rim. Nevels! Might have to get one here. Might have to get a T.O., and Oregon State does. That's Garrett Neville's version of a stocking stuffer right there on the alley-oop pass from Schamberger. Transition, easy baskets come off of transition. The fast break, that's not an easy pass to make. That's an easy shot, though, when you're shooting it down through the cylinder. Schamberger taking the giving spirit seriously with his ninth assist, the alley-oop pass to Garrett Nelvin. Devils, that is a career high for Schamberger in assists. And for young big guys, take a page from uh, Isaac Fodu's book. You have to be able to dribble with both hands, yes. Shoot with both hands, of course, but you also have to be able to pivot with both feet. If not, your game is cut in half. This guy has superb footwork, and that's why he's so good around the basket. And Schamberger, those career high nine assists, and just one turnover to speak of so far in this game. Really good young player. If you play hard, some coach will find a place for you. And he does. And he pokes it away in the steal. And wisely dribbles it out. How about that decision? Well, that, that, that's what good point guards do. They make good decisions with the basketball, and Schamberger did on that possession. Passes up the three. And a foul is called against Oregon State. And Schamberger was fortunate. Fortunate got a little too deep. 11.40 to play on this Christmas Day. An 11-point lead for Hawaii. Largest lead of the game. And we've had some very memorable championship games in this tournament over the past few years playing for that piece of hardware. Absolutely. And, uh, Craig Robinson's telling these guys when they come to the timeout, fellas, what we're thinking right now is, is so important. We can't dip our heads, feel sorry for ourselves. We have to come out with a little bit more of an aggressive attitude. Stan Hardinger gets his own long rebound. And, and that's what we're talking about. Stan Hardinger makes the energy play. From the elbow, rims out on him, goes out of bounds, and it'll belong to Oregon State. Hawaii playing against a Pac-12 opponent for the first time in the Gib Arnold era, and actually the first time since 2006. Sometimes it's not about offenses and defenses, it's about energy and emotion, and Oregon State has to play with more energy. Oregon State does lead the all-time series here. 21 wins to seven Hawaii victories, and there is another turnover. Well, Duvivier asked the official whether it got tipped, and at least one of them agreed, so they reversed the call. It will stay here in the direction of Oregon State. You see Gib Arnold's record through his first three-plus. Had a signature win back in the 2011 Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic over 14th-ranked Xavier. And it's a turnover. It belongs to the Rainbow Warriors. 
and I has to catch that ball. It, it's, you, you, you're making that cut. You know he's gonna he's going to pass it to you. Neville's left alone. That's inexcusable. They have a dead ball situation on the turnover, and Hawaii gets a layup. Largest lead continues to grow here for Hawaii. Now 13. Davis Rositis, the reserve seven footer, number 13 on the floor for the Rainbow Warriors. Let's get a good shot offensively, and that starts with ball reversal. Here's Barton with 10 on the shot clock. Stops and pops for three, doesn't get the bounce. Nevels, he's putting on a high flying act here. Had a demonstrative shot block, alley-oop dunk. Went a few levels up for that rebound. And here he is with the basketball getting trapped. Now hands it off to Stan Hardinger. Drives the lane, a lot of contact, no whistle. And Oregon State somehow brings it up the floor. Things getting a little sloppy at both ends. And a traveling violation called against Barton. Oregon State playing a little too fast on the offensive end. Now, watch receipt. It's almost an illegal screen, but a very smart play by Rositas. Sort of just created an avenue for him to take the ball to the, to the basket. Meanwhile, 13 turnovers for Oregon State. That's their per game average as a team. Still almost 10 minutes to play in this game. Playing a little too fast on the offensive end, Oregon State. And, and you're seeing Hawaii with all the dribble penetration. It's like they have Oregon State on the screen defensively. Miss from Nevels. That's been a rarity here in this game. Vivier. Contested shot. Smith bothered him enough to force the miss. And, and you're seeing Oregon State try to shoot their way out of trouble instead of executing their way out of trouble. And that one blocked out of bounds. Mass substitutions. Hawaii brings Foto and Spearman in. Nelson onto the floor for the Beavers. See for Hawaii. Four players in double figures. Christian Stan Hardinger leading the way with 15. And if you're Oregon State, you're, you're scoring, a, taking a lot of shots from the perimeter. You, as a team, you might say, hey, let, fellas, let's go inside. Let's get the ball in the blocks. Three by Robbins. They needed it. They didn't get it. And another long jump shot by the Beavers. I would tell our guys, three straight jump shots, fellas. Let's go inside. We haven't scored with those jumpers. to draws a little extra attention from Nelson spins the other way Spearman there to clean it up and there's Mr. Energy Mr. Effort Brandon Spearman the glue guy for this Hawaii basketball team he now has 14 Hawaii now leads by 15 Spearman is just playing so hard and you love that if you're Gib Arnold Nelson misses the jumper Hawaii's defense continued to make it even harder here in this recent stretch of the second it's half. It's easier to run Kanoa when guys are taking long shots because when they're missing them, long shots equal long rebounds. And some of those shots are almost outlets to Hawaii, and, and they're just moving down the floor in transition with their fast break. We talked about this earlier in the, yeah, in the game in the first half. On the lift of the shot, when, when Roberto Nelson takes that baseline jump shot, Chalet Barton has to be back. He should be all the way back to the top of the other key. And Foto getting a couple from the line. Look at this score, 63-46. And a near turnover on the inbound. It is a turnover on the inbound. No, they do. They point in the direction of Hawaii. It looked like the official was pointing it's in the direction of Oregon State, but yes, it's Hawaii inbound. That's a mental mistake. Speaking of mental mistakes, they let Foto wide open for the cram. And the reason he's wide open is because when the screen occurs, Oregon State doesn't talk and say one word, switch. 
Just talk it out. Nelson, all kinds of activity around him defensively, and finally a reach-in foul is called. Well, the inbound play worked to perfection here well, for Hawaii. If, if, we're two, if we're together, two teammates, and there's a scre uh, screen, let's talk it. Let's say one word, switch. And that would eliminate the dunk. It was five minutes, a 12-0 Hawaii run over that time. And you mentioned a lot of long outside shots for Oregon State's offense. What is Hawaii doing defensively to force the Beavers into that kind of offensive strategy? They're, they're not allowing the basketball into the post. But if you're Oregon State, you have to understand how our team is built. We, we, we run the Princeton offense, understand who we are. Let's look to go inside a little bit with some post-ups because we're not making perimeter jump shots. The only guy that could really create for himself off the dribble is Roberto Nelson. And Hawaii changes up and goes 2-3 zone. What do you think of that call? I, I, you know what? I like it. It gives them a different look. You know, you know Coach Robinson was in the huddle talking about what we're going to do against man-to-man. -man. Nice. They get it deep into Gomez, up in and one. So he'll go to the free throw line for a much-needed three-point opportunity. And like we talked about, if you're Oregon State, let's go inside. They did. Gomez delivered for them. One, that's exactly where you want to get the basketball against the zone, either short corner or in the middle. Defensively, that was on Fodu taking that away. But uh, let's see if this gives Oregon State a little bit of a momentum here. Gomez, who missed his freshman year after breaking his left leg in a pickup game back home in Senegal. That was the summer of 2011, and it just continued to give him problem after problem. And he actually limps over to the sideline following that three-point play. Now there's plenty of time with Oregon State. Let's sit down. Let's try to get three straight stops and work our way back into the basketball game. The ISO focus on Collier. The deep position, but he walked with it. A few too many steps on the way to the hoop. What you like about the move, though, is he's trying to get to the middle of the lane. And when you're playing foe two, believe it or not, you got to put your body on him before he gets to the lane line. See the turnover numbers, 14 for Oregon State, 7 for Hawaii. And that was another area of advantage for the Rainbow Warriors the other night against St. Mary's. St. Mary's turned it over 17 times to Hawaii's 10. I, I, I like Hawaii going to Foto as much as they are on the interior. He's really a good low post player. Now, if you're Oregon State, let's go possession by possession. We just scored on the inside. Let's see if we can get another inside play. And they're trying to post Roberto Nelson on Schamberger. What is sagging a bit on some of these perimeter shooters for Oregon State. This is a guy you don't want to sag off of. Nelson, quick pass. Barton will try a three and hit. Nice pass. Sometimes when you're a scorer, you have to be a willing passer. Why? Because you're going to draw a second defender. And that's exactly what Roberto Nelson did. Stan Hardinger. And a three-second violation called against the Rainbow Warriors. So a couple of giveaways here for Hawaii after opening up that 19-point lead. And that's exactly what we talked about. Let's see if you can get, if you're Oregon State, three straight stops and consecutive scores and uh, a good timeout by Gib Arnold. Rainbow Warriors preseason picked sixth in the Big West Conference, and some of the Hawaii players spoke publicly about being somewhat offended, feeling a little slighted by that prediction. Give Arnold saying, you know what, we're going to go ahead and play the conference schedule anyway because we think we have a chance of <laughs> finishing maybe a little bit better. But UC Irvine selected number one in the preseason rankings. And you know what you tell those guys as a coach, boys, uh, big eyes, Big ears, small mouth, that's all. Don't be saying anything. Look at me when I'm talking to you, listen, but uh, don't say anything about it. Let's do our talking on the floor. And the upcoming schedule for the eight and three Rainbow Warriors, Norfolk State on Monday. I, I really like this Hawaii team. I think they have good guard play, good guys on the interior and Fotu and Stan Hardinger. This is a team that Gib Arnold thinks is a little bit better built for Big West play. Smith off the turnover. 
see those, those, those plays just kill you. You know, turnovers in the front court near the basket won't hurt you as much, but those plays at the top of your offense like we saw, those are killers. Nelson fouled by Spearman. See, Spearman's trying to be physical and push Nelson off of that dribble handoff, but when he extends his arm, that's the absolute right call. Shoftenar to inbound from the baseline. Under six minutes to play. Sends it up top. Charlie Barton controlling. And you're seeing Hawaii defend with that fouling because with five and a half to go, Oregon State's not even in the bonus. Left corner three off the mark by Morris Walker. And Hawaii clears it. Schamberger, full two, flush. And that's Charlie Barton on defense. The dribbler gets too deep, but you have to stop the block first if you're Barton. He started to fade to the corner to cover the perimeter guy. Double-digit assist now for Keith Schamberger. He's got 10, a career high. Collier made that look easy. Well, when you're playing Collier, you can't give him any angles. He doesn't have a lot of lift. He's not a guy that plays above the rim. So you can't give him an angle to the basket to shoot the ball. Stay between him and the cylinder. Stan Hardinger got that one wiped away. Collier, the team's leader in lost shots. Now Shoftenar, open look for three, yes. The toughest three to defend is the transition three. And a timeout taken by Gib Arnold and the Rainbow Warriors. 69-57 with 4.36 left to play. And Oregon State showing some signs of life, although for the majority of this one, it has been Hawaii laying its authority, particularly in the post. Well, in the post, and they're doing it a, a, a variety of ways. They're doing it with drives. They're doing, we're seeing post up by Fotu right here. Again, Fotu, quick spin, maybe hooked a little bit with his elbow. And then the dunk down. On that last possession, we just saw the dunk down. Barton should have taken the post, but they're scoring at the rim, which are obviously high percentage shots. And they're getting him on post ups and fast break opportunities. See the points in the paint. And what you're shooting 50% from the field for the game compared to 44 for Oregon State. But the Beavers showing a few signs here over the last sequence or two. Four and a half minutes to play. We're, we're, you're, if you're Coach Robinson, you're saying, fellas, we're only down 12. Let's go right here now. Stop, score, stop. A little three possession sequence, that's what they need. Here's Schamberger bringing it across the timeline. And you love Hawaii's patience under five minutes. Stan Hardinger sets the feet, can't hit the jump shot. Spearman, the offensive board. And there's going to be a foul against Oregon State. They're going to get Jamal Reed. That's his fourth. Wow, when you're playing an energy guy like Spearman, you better find when that, when that ball's in the air and you're playing against him, that's when the fight starts. Check that. Make that five on Jamal Reed. So he sits. Stan Hardinger really did a favor for Oregon State when he took the perimeter jump shot. That's not his strength. He's a strong, aggressive driver, but he can't allow the second shot opportunity. Garrett Nevels checks back in for Stan Hardinger. Isaac Fotu awaits his free throw opportunities at the line. You know, I, first, first practice of the year, I'd, I'd have the guy stand around the free throw area and would shoot the ball, and I'd say, fellas, I want you to walk over and grab it. I'd shoot him and go 1,001, 1,002, somebody would pick it up. Ahead of the pack, Morris Walker, and one. And, and a, a chance to cut it to single digits. And a good pitch ahead. The fastest way of advancing the basketball is with the pass. But, but, but I would shoot the basketball, finishing that story, and guys would just walk over and pick, and I would count out loud, 1,001, 1,000. And I'd do it three times, and I'd say, fellas, how long will it take us to box out? Two seconds, coach. That's all you have to work to rebound. Two 
seconds. Put your body on a guy and get him out of there, and they better do that with Spearman. Morris Walker completes the three-point play, and just like that, it goes from a 19-point lead for Hawaii to a nine-point advantage. Oregon State on an 8-0 run currently. Hamburger just <laughs> as if he's weaving around traffic cones. And, and you know what I like? You could hear him dribbling the ball. You know what that means? It's a hard, forceful dribble. O2 fouled by Shoftenar. See. 69-60, Rainbow Warriors trying to finish it off on Christmas Day. Still plenty of hoops to be played. Beavers have closed the gap. It was a 19-point advantage at one stretch for the Rainbow Warriors. Championship game coming up, 8.30 Eastern, ESPN2, 14th ranked Iowa State and Boise State for the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic Marbles. Looks to be a good one. It, it will be a good one. Two really high-scoring basketball teams. You know, when, when I'm seeing in Hawaii in person here, it, it, it requires so much energy to play against them because of the way that they play. They play fast. You have Fodu and Stan Hardiger on the inside. And a huge energy guy in Spearman. Fodu misses the free throw. The lob pass to the rim. Too strong. Victor Robbins was behind the D. Nelson sent it Salem. And Nelson will take a breather with 345 on the and, clock. Nelson's an interesting story. 13 points in the first half, just two since the intermission. And, and the reason he's taking a breather is not because he's tired, because Craig Robinson took him out for the pass. That's not what they need right now. Down nine with the ball. Let's get a good offensive possession from our senior guard. Nevels kicks it to Schamberger, guarded by Duvivier. And they're going to get Malcolm Duvivier on the foul. And you, you can't let Hawaii live at the free throw line. And I like what Hawaii's doing. Multiple pass possessions. Their big guys are posting up hard inside. And they're putting foul pressure on Oregon State. And how many times have we seen late in the shot clock a reach-in foul called in this game? At both ends, Stan Hardinger, though, unable to take advantage of the free throw. And Oregon State is getting their chances. Shoften our open look. In and out it goes. Rebound, Schamberger. And Nevels decides against pulling the trigger. And He'll and try to work the clock a little bit further. And a very good decision. If we didn't have anything with the break, let's push it. Let's go into our half-court set and run good offense. And Hawaii really spreading out Oregon State defensively. Eight seconds to shoot. Schamberger turns the corner. Layup not there. Fulto grabs it. Follows it up, but he walked with it prior to the putback. It belongs to Oregon State. No bucket. 69-60. When you go deep into the clock, like Hawaii is on offense, you know they're going to run ball screen in action. Oregon State has to guard the ball screen with all five guys. The drive by Barton. Off the mark. Schamberger fouled as he tried to come out of the mosh pit with it. Now, on the ball screen action right now, watch when Fotu sets the screen. It was a little bit ahead of us, but yeah, he did. That's a great call by the officials, the little bunny hop. But when he's rolling to the basket, someone else needs to pick him up. Tenth team foul for Oregon State. So two shots coming up here for Keith Schamberger. Hawaii doing what it can here on this Christmas holiday to let Oregon State remain involved in this game. Schamberger will get another chance. A lot of gifts being given <laughs> by the uh, Rainbow. Ten assists for Keith Schamberger. The transfer from San Jose State, redshirted a year ago, averaged almost 13 points, almost four assists in two years with the Spartans. And we see a lane violation, and in, in, in the free throw was obviously missed, but uh, neither team under four minutes executing real well right now. 
Gib Arnold signals for a break in the action. What is he telling his players? 222 left, and they've come out of the offensive end with a few empty possessions as of late. They really have, but they're getting good looks. We've seen Foto with a layup, he walked, and they're at the free throw line right now. They just got to step up, big heart, and knock down free throws to secure the win. ESPNU's coverage of ACC basketball continues Friday when Marcus Page and the Tar Heels host Northern Kentucky at the Dean Smith Center. That's Friday at 7 on ESPNU, also live on Watch ESPN. In the ACC, how about the standings? A conference that looks a lot different from when you were coaching well, who, who in the are ACC those two days. teams up top there, Syracuse and Pittsburgh, but uh, Trevor Cooney, Tyler Ennis, the guards for Syracuse. When they lost Michael Carter Williams and Brandon Trish, you thought, uh-oh, they're going to be in trouble. Some veteran, experienced guards, but those two young guys, Ennis and Cooney, have really stepped up. Big loss for Notre Dame as well, losing oh. Jaron Grant. But uh, the Blue Devils will always, <laughs> always be there. I, I really believe they're one of the best offensive teams in the country, along with Iowa State in the tournament here. I called two Duke games earlier in the year. They can score from all five positions. Defense was a problem for them early, but it's really Coach K securing them defensively. Yeah, that was one of the questions, how they would adjust to the rule changes, being a team that plays man so much. How have you seen the adjustment? Well, what you saw in the past was they were into you and pressuring, which they're doing now. But Cano, in the past, cheerleaders came off the baseline to take charges <laughs> against you. With the new rules, if you're in your upward motion, I think that the new rule in that area has really hurt Duke defensively. Closing in on two minutes to go. Barton turns the corner, left it short, but Nelson cleans up the mess. And it's a seven-point game with 2.07 ticking down. So Craig Robinson goes back with the Roberto Nelson, his senior, and he delivers. Neville's open, mid-ranger. Got it. The press, and you have to do it if you're Craig Robinson, is opening the court for Hawaii. 16 points for Neville's Nelson fouled on the dribble drive and Christian Stan Hardinger for Hawaii walking gingerly after that last sequence. Now if Roberto Nelson could hit these two free throws coach Robinson has a decision to make here and he needs to extend his defense absolutely. So let's see what kind of pressure they come with to Oregon State hopefully after the after the two nights. And a rare miss. Just his second missed free throw of this tournament. He was 25 of 26 prior to that. Now this guy coming into the game for Hawaii, you, you better match his energy. Brandon Spearman has been excellent on the offensive glass. You can't give Hawaii extra possessions coming down the stretch with offensive rebounds. Come on, Lane. Stan Hardinger. Hawaii going to try to take as much time off the clock and work for a good shot. 1-3-1 one, one defense by Oregon State. Twelve seconds to shoot. Schamberger goes cross court. Smith is open. Decides to put it on the floor. Schamberger will try a three. Yes! And if you're Hawaii, you couldn't have asked for a better offensive possession. Deep into the clock and a wide open three. Nelson on the drive, wrapped up by Nevels, but a foul is called and it'll be two shots for Roberto Nelson. I think Nevels had the basketball, but the foul occurred before this point. And here's Keith Schamberger. He's been giving it up so much in this game. Ten assists. That time he kept it for himself. When you're in the 1-3-1, you're trapping. It's a real high-energy defense. And the dribble penetration and the kick out. Schaffner tried to get out, but a little too late. And there's a make free throw by Nelson. Now, you like what Craig Robinson is doing from a, a, a coaching standpoint. He has a guy at the table, so if Nelson makes the free throw, he can substitute, gives you a chance to set up your defense. 
Give Nelson 20 points for the game. He comes out. Duvivier onto the floor. A nine-point differential. How about the balance in scoring for Hawaii, Coach? 17 for Fotu, 16 for Nevels, 15 for Stan Hardinger, and 14 for Spearman. That's one of the reasons why they're a good offensive team, because they can score from so many positions. There's the reach-in foul committed by Duvivier. Now, tough. You, you don't have much choice, but the tough fouling, Schamberger, 85% from the free throw line. Nelson with three fouls. Left the game so that Oregon State could commit the foul. He'll check back in. Keith Schamberger goes to the free throw line. An 85% free throw shooter has missed his only attempt so far in this game. Makes that one. Well, what Oregon State needs to do is turn this into a free throw shooting contest. What? Gib Arnold says he can breathe easy when Keith Schamberger is controlling the basketball. Just one of those guys that he knows eight or nine times out of ten he'll make the right decision. A soft press by Hawaii. Nelson big three. And a timeout called by the Beavers. And, and, and you saw what Gib Arnold tried to do there. He tried to put a little bit of a soft pressure so that Oregon State would run some clock. But it cost him because they got an open three. So Hawaii not out of the woods just yet. How do the Rainbow Warriors seal this one up here on Christmas Day? They need to take care of the basketball. But if you're Oregon State, you want to extend your defense. See if we can get a steal. Let's trap the first pass. Then we don't have much choice to know. If the ball is in, then we have to foul because we got to make it a free throw shooting contest. If they're making one or two free throws and we're making threes like Roberto Nelson did right there, that bodes well for Oregon State. The lead is nine for Hawaii. 57 seconds to go. Still plenty of time. Third place game coming up. Akron in South Carolina. That's next on ESPN2, and then it's the championship game at 8.30 Eastern, Iowa State and Boise State. You're trying to get a five count. Schamberg with that left-handed dribble, brings it across the timeline, and then Duvivier commits the foul. That's the exact right thing to do if you're Oregon State. Let's try to get a steal in the backcourt. As soon as they cross the timeline, we don't have much choice. We have the foul. So the L.A. native, 5'11 junior, Keith Schamberger, missing the free throw. Hawaii has left the door ajar for a good stretch here in the second half. They really have, and, and we, we saw Roberto Nelson shoot and make a wide open three, but if we don't have a wide open three, let's drive the ball to the basket. Plenty of time. 10-point game, 51.5 seconds to play. And again, Hawaii goes token pressure to hopefully burn some time off the shot clock. Barton missed everything. Collier collects it. Missed the follow-up, but the second time is a charm. Oregon State does not use a timeout. Nevels ahead of the pack. Missed the lay-in. Rebound Collier. Out the pass ahead. Goes to Morris Walker. Tears to the hoop. Offensive foul call. Nevels, you feel any pressure at all? You got to back that back, the basketball back out. Stan Hardinger took it, Coach. What do you think? I don't like the call. It looked like he was moving.